Good evening and welcome to 16 by 9 The Bigger Picture. Captain Brian Buse is a Canadian Top Gun, a high-flying daredevil with towering confidence. But when his CF-18 fighter jet crashed, the massive explosion made it hard to believe anyone could walk away alive. But he did. Tonight, a 16 by 9 exclusive about a brush with death, a miracle, and his guardian angel. Here's our Mike Lucatour. Cool, confident, competitive, the best of the best. Canada's elite pilots. To get in the cockpit of a CF-18 Hornet jet, you've had years of training, you're unflappable, and you feel the need for speed. Meet Captain Brian Buse, Air Force fighter pilot. He spent 1,200 hours flying these jets, and he loves it. Every morning I'd walk around, I'd tap it on the side, say, hey baby, how you doing? To share that passion with the public, he was practicing this summer, getting ready for an air show in Lethbridge, Alberta. It was a typical day, I felt good. I took some time to myself before my practice, like I do before every air show. I just lock myself in a vehicle, I go through my routine, and I get myself mentally prepared. Then he took to the skies, flying low and slow. 330 feet in the air, coming in to the sounds of the Bee Gees hit single. In the high alpha pass, jet flies by nice and slow, so you can't have a song that's too rocking or too heavy of a beat. So I threw in a little disco, and staying alive is what I picked. This is his own personal video of what the high alpha pass aerial maneuver looks like practiced it at least 50 times before. But on this day, over Lethbridge, Alberta, something went terribly wrong. And staying alive was suddenly not going to be so easy. When 16x9 met with Captain Brian Buse at his home base of CFB Bagotville this fall, it was the first time he sat in a cockpit since that fateful day in July. Right away, the memories started coming back. It was when I added the full afterburner that the jet stopped responding to my control inputs. So um, the nose started to fall to the right and it just started to kind of sink to the right. So I remember my hand on the stick pushing forward and to the left corner to try to correct that. But still, the plane kept turning and started to plummet. Fighter jet pilots live with the knowledge that the way they get into the plane might not be the way they get out. And I knew, I remember thinking that I might have to eject from this, like something is horribly wrong. Now the moment came when Brian knew he had lost his fight. He reached for the ejection handle, something he'd never done before. I do remember thinking that uh, I can't believe that I'm doing it. Like it just felt unreal, the fact that I'm actually going to pull this handle. He pulled the lever two seconds before his plane hit the ground. If he had waited even a fraction more, he wouldn't be here to tell the tale. So the canopy, I remember seeing that um, blast off, and then this canopy bow here, I just remember seeing the whole jet fall down below me. So the seat starts moving up on a rail. Once it's at the top of the rails, the rocket motors fire. By the time the seat starts moving until the time the parachute comes out is 0.45 seconds. So it's a very quick ride. So I'm hanging in this parachute, kind of in shock of what had just happened. And then I watched my jet as it rolled over and nosed into the ground and then exploded. And it's the air show jet. So it's got the, the tails painted up nicely. And I specifically remember seeing those freshly painted tails go into the ground and explode. And uh, I don't know, I just say it's such a, a surreal feeling and that's the only way I can describe it. That's exactly how his friends and the team felt as well. Feet away from the billowing smoke and burning carbon fiber was the technician who did the final checks on the plane with Brian, Sarah Nantel. I was sitting in a camping chair and honestly I put my hands on my head and 50 times just said, oh my God, I, I could not believe it. I thought, I honestly thought it wasn't happening and I saw the chute deploy and was still, at that point I was still unsure. Frank Sear is a CF-18 Hornet mechanic. So that's you right there filming? That is me. 
with Brian's camera. Yes. He had worked on Brian's jet and was videotaping the routine for the pilot. Did you think that you were filming his death? At one point, yeah. Oh yeah, I thought I was filming my own death at one point. <laughs> Started doing the mental math. Okay, he's coming 100, 100 miles an hour, I'd say. And I'm filming, I, I can't run away that fast. <laughs> Even the most stone-faced had trouble staying composed. <laughs> it's, it's still pretty, uh, pretty emotional afterwards. Describe it for me. I mean, what kinds of emotions are you going through your mind? Luck. Fear. Master Corporal Colin Dickey was the crew chief at the Lethbridge Air Show. And it's a family. Whether you've known him for a year, whether you've known him for ten. So you worry about him. His family. Back at CFB Bagotville, Quebec, we showed the video to the men who inspected the seat that saved Brian's life. As the video rolls, they relive the moment. He's alive, but he, he was close to die. Even for the pilot who lived through those hellish moments, another look brings a new appreciation for just how lucky he was. A little surprising? Yeah, it's shocking to watch. I had a pretty good view that day too, so. <laughs> so but no, it's, uh, it's shocking to see. Bonjour. Brian knows exactly how close he came. And that's why these mini reunions around the base have been so special. It's good to have hands here to shake. Yeah. yeah. That's how do you feel? Yeah. I feel good. Yeah. yeah. It's also turned him into somewhat of a celebrity. Now Brian has a newfound interest in the seat that saved his life. Made by British company Martin Baker, it's assembled and armed on the base in Canada. And the pilot has a lot more respect for the guys who do that. Now that I think about it more, I mean, these guys have to build a product that the very first time it's used, it has to work perfectly or somebody will die. Notoriety and with it, the inevitable. Nicknames. There's one that's already starting to take off. Rocket Man. So uh, that one seems to be uh, a nice one. Rocket Man's not so bad. I rode a rocket once. <laughs> Whatever. His sense of humor came through the crash intact and his back is on the mend. But the question remains, how did Brian survive what seemed impossible? He says there's more to it than just his training. Someone was watching over him that day. I know that I am lucky to be alive and I don't take that for granted at all. Yeah, I did go through something that was brought me right to the edge, but, but uh, I'm still here, so I am thankful for that. Still to come on 16 by 9. This might have been the day, like, you don't know. Do you share those feelings with your family? No. My family's been through enough. We don't need to think about that stuff. He said I had my guardian angels with me. No. That's all coming up. <laughs> Welcome back to 16 by 9, the bigger picture. It was the crash scene around the world. Fighter pilot Captain Brian Buse cheating death by just seconds. But that narrow escape left its mark on him and his family. Deep scars compounded by an old and painful wound. Mike LeCouture has this story. Born and raised on the prairies for Captain Brian Buse, home is the wide open skies of Etonia, Saskatchewan. Everyone in this town knows the man who is the pilot, but they also remember the boy who grew up here. That same boy learned from his father, Ken, that any job worth doing is worth doing well. I don't like to brag, but yeah, <laughs> we're really proud of him. For what he has accomplished on his own. And, and early on, Brian, the youngest of three boys, stood out, not only for his hockey scars, but also for his adventurous nature. Let's say that I used to help him shovel the snow up into a pile so that he could jump off the roof of the house, so. He's always been a daredevil, like he'd ride his motorbike around the farm on the back wheel. He seems to have good sense of balance or something <laughs> that can do all those kinds of things. When Buse was in school, an aptitude test said that his future job would be as a bus driver. Instead of letting fate take its course, Buse took the controls. He enlisted in flying school in Okotoks, Alberta. He graduated first in his class. And it was then that the proud pilot returned home to land a plane right here at the Grass Airstrip, just on the edge of town. 
But this time, that boy who became a pilot was in for a landing that was far from smooth. His brother Brent was back home in Saskatchewan. On that afternoon, he got news Brian had crashed. But for one agonizing hour, that was all he heard. I guess I always felt that something might happen like that someday, you know, with the type of job that he has. But um, I guess at the same time, you're never, you're never prepared. It was quite shocking for sure, yeah. Shocking for his parents too. His mother and father were on their way to the air show in Lethbridge to see Brian fly. Their eldest son, Blair, called the couple to deliver the news. Of course, we were concerned. But hearing that from Blair, we knew that he was okay. Yeah. After his scrape with death, Captain Brian Buse retreated here to the safest place he knew, the family farm. If something happened to you, wouldn't you want to go home? That's a place that you feel protected, I guess. And it was in that protected place that what happened in those split seconds in the sky finally hit home. And Brian came face to face with his own mortality. Probably less than a week after the accident, thinking, well, this might have been the day. Like, you don't know. Um, so, yeah, I did have a brief moment of thinking about that, but it doesn't do me any good to think about it. Do you share those feelings with your family? No. Nope. Why not? They might see it though. <laughs> Why not? My family's been through enough. We don't need to think about that stuff. Few people know exactly how much the Buse family has been through. But the ones who do know say someone was watching over Brian on that fateful day. He said I had my guardian angels with me. No. That angel's name is Kim. It was 2005. Brian was married. He and his wife Kim were stationed at CFB Cold Lake in Alberta. Kim was seven months pregnant. It was the early morning hours of February 9th. Now, Kim and two other pilots' wives were traveling together headed to Edmonton when their car hit black ice. It slid out of control and into the path of an oncoming truck. All three died on impact. And Brian made that desperate phone call to his parents. I thought that maybe Kim had had a miscarriage, but didn't realize it was as bad as it was. She was her only daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was, was very special. Yeah. Came within two months. <clears throat> of our first grandchild. Brian has learned to live with the pain of that loss five years ago, but in the moments after the crash, Brian's mind and heart went there in an instant. I thought about it right away. I just thought, wow, I'm, I'm really lucky, and I thank God and my angels up there that, that I'm still here. You know, things happen, life goes on. So with me and my job, something happened, life goes on. Let's. Let's keep rolling because that's all we have left. As Brian keeps rolling, he has Kim close to his heart and his home. He has persevered through tragedy and gone on to cheat death by just seconds. Like the geese that glide over the Buse family farm, Brian is anxious to get back up in the air. Injuries suffered in the crash are grounding him for now, but his family knows it'll only be a matter of time before this captain takes to the air again. It's, that's where he... He loves to be, you know, told me that uh, if somebody ever wanted to pay him to spend his time flying in the air and that was going to be his career, he was going to do it. And soon enough, this pilot will be soaring the skies once more. Itching to get back. I am. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> we have no idea, eh? <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> soaring back to the job that almost killed him, but also to the place that makes him feel the most alive. Sure, my job might be dangerous compared to others out there, but I couldn't imagine doing anything else.